Great. Okay. I think I might get started. I'm sure there'll be other people um, logging in as I'm starting. So thank you everyone for joining us today for this information session on the establishment of the First Nations Expert Working Group on Indigenous Cultural Intellectual Property. My name is Trish Ajay and I'm a Wafafi Mabiok woman and the director of the Sandline Legislation Team at the Office for the Arts. I'm joined here by my team members, which includes Aisha, Ross, Carl, Audrey, and Danica. The purpose of today's information session is to provide some background and detail about the First Nations Expert Working Group on ICIP, what it is, why we're establishing it, who we're looking for to join the working group, and how to apply. We're also here to help answer any questions that you may have about the expert working group and the application process. So just a few housekeeping matters before we begin, as we've mentioned, but you may notice that the session is being recorded. Uh, we'll be putting a recording of today's information session on the Office of the Arts Standalone Legislation website, as well as on the Tender page. Please remain on mute to eliminate background noise during the presentation. At the end of the presentation, there'll be plenty of time for questions. If you'd like to submit any questions during the presentation, you can add them to the chat and we can answer those at the end of the session. A reminder that any questions we are asked and responses given will be included in the FAQ document published on our webpage and updated on the Tender website to ensure everyone is getting the same information. So I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which our department is located and where we conduct our business. I'm talking to you today from Mabantua, Alice Springs, the traditional lands of the Aranda people. I'd also like to acknowledge and welcome Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are with us today and also pay respects to the different lands that you're zooming in from as well. So. Who is Office for the Arts? Uh, the Office for the Arts is the Australian Government Department responsible for developing policies and delivering programs which support participation in and access to Australia's arts and cultural sector. This includes a number of Indigenous in initiatives such as the Indigenous Visual Arts Industry Support Program or IVAIS which provides funding for over 80,000, sorry, 80 um, Indigenous owned art centres, the repatriation of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander ancestors from overseas, as well as the Indigenous Languages and Arts Program. The Office for the Arts is also responsible for commitments under the National Cultural Policy Revive. This leads me to the purpose in setting up the First Nations Expert Working Group. One of the commitments in Revive is to introduce standalone legislation to protect First Nations traditional knowledge and cultural expressions, including to address the harm caused by fake art, merchandise and souvenirs. Another term that we know for TK and TCEs is Indigenous Cultural Intellectual Property or ICIP. As we all know in First Nations matters, the process by which we do things is just as important as the subject matter. Um, for all actions under the National Cultural Policy, including the development of this legislation, the Australian Government has committed to a First Nations-led process. To ensure, to ensure a First Nations-led process, the Department has funding over the next four years to engage in community consultation on the development of the legislation. Additionally, and for the reason for our information session today, we are also establishing a new First Nations expert working group on ICIP. So what is ICIP? Most of you probably know, but um, just a bit of background, Indigenous Cultural IP or ICIP refers to the rights that First Nations have and want to, in relation to their culture and cultural heritage. Current Australian laws have not been designed for or by First Nations people. While existing laws, such as intellectual property laws, may provide a degree of protection in certain circumstances, this is the exception rather than the rule. And there are many gaps in the current protections for ICIP. 
Some of these gaps include no requirements relating to obtaining informed consent from rights holders or cultural custodians, no recognition of communal ownership of ICIP, no recognition of um, oral stories or particular designs and styles that come out of communities, and also no penalties for breaching ICIP. This leads us to the work of the First Nations Expert Working Group. Firstly, the main objective of the First Nations Expert Working Group will be to provide strategic advice to the Office for the Arts and also other government departments on the development of this new legislation to protect ICIP. The First Nations Expert Working Group will also assist in promoting awareness and understanding of ICIP as it relates to the standalone legislation and give advice to government on any associated measures being delivered by the Office for the Arts. So just in relation to the working conditions, the First Nations Expert Working Group will operate for three years. There'll be a maximum of seven members and one chair. Members will serve two year terms with the possibility to extend for a third year. The position is a paid part-time role. Payment is based on the rates set by the remuneration tribunal. The daily fee for the chair is $595 and for members, $448. The commitment will require members to attend at least five meetings per year. We've also allocated for up to 12 working days if required. Members will ordinarily work in a hybrid environment, working online and face-to-face. -face. Travel may be required for attendance at some meetings, as well as for some of the annual community consultation. The Office for the Arts will provide Secretariat support for the meetings and the Office for the Arts will cover costs and assist with any relevant arrangements for travel. So who are we looking for? Applicants for the First Nations Expert Working Group must be Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander. This is because only Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people have the deep knowledge and lived experience of ICOP to be able to inform the work of the First Nations Expert Working Group. It is also in keeping with the Australian Government's commitment for the work on the legislation to be developed through a First Nations-led process, as well as broader government commitments under closing the gap. In terms of skill set, we are looking for candidates with one or more of the following criteria. So knowledge and expertise in relation to Indigenous cultural IP or ICOP, lived experience in relation to Indigenous cultural IP, including an understanding of the current issues faced by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in this space. A proven ability to engage with a range of stakeholders and represent the views of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Applications will be assessed by a panel of three First Nations departmental staff. In reviewing the applications, considerations will be given to ensuring the First Nations Expert Working Group contains a diversity of areas of ICIP knowledge, as well as gender and other diversity, such as language groups, for example, and ages. Okay, that's my bit done. So I'll hand over to my colleague, Aisha, to step me through the application process. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, so my name is Aisha and Audrey, my colleague, and I will take you through the steps on how to apply through the Ausbender Procurement System. This is a system that is designed for companies who compete for um, jobs, but um, you will be individuals and I'm going to help you through what seems like a very complex system and simplify it. So how do you apply? As this is a tender process, it is quite different to the process you may be familiar with as an individual when applying for a job or an expression of interest. To begin with, there are specific terms used in the tender documents, which I'll just translate for you now. So when you see the approach to market, this is a document that allow, outlines the requirements you need to um, respond to in applying for this position. In the tender process, you are actually referred to as the supplier, which is the same as being an applicant. 
It simply means you are the supplier of your services that you provide to the expert working group. Um, we are the customer and we are seeking your expertise. The tender is your application. So as I said, we understand applying through a tender process is difficult to navigate. So we are trying to make the process as simple as possible. You'll be competing, um, completing your application on the approach to sorry, on the approach to market document, which we'll show you a little later. In order to progress through this document, you need to meet the eligibility requirements and also provide required information and some attachments. So unfortunately, we can, um, we can only accept ap applications submitted no later than 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Friday, 20 September through the Austender website. So let me take you on a run through of the tender process, highlighting the areas you need to complete and those we do not expect you to complete as you're not applying as a company. So I'll have Audrey share her screen as she is so we can walk through the steps together. Um, Danica, do you mind just dropping a link to the Oz tender in the chat now? Um, okay, let's begin the process. Firstly, you just need to register. You will need to set up the Oz tender account if you haven't already got one. And you just do this by going to www.tenders.gov.au. This brings up the Oz tender website and click new registration. Um, Audrey's pointing it to it now. Once you're in there, there's a new user registration form. You fill this form with your personal details. However, the good news is the only mandatory information you need is um, to provide is actually asterisked. So there aren't that many. So again, because Austender is normally a portal for a company to compete for a tender, there will be some questions about your organization, um, but in this case, you are just an individual. So for instance, under organization company name, you can put individual instead of providing a company name, and you don't need to complete the ABN or the trading name. If you do happen to have an ABN, um, absolutely supply it. Once you've filled out the whole of the information, click the orange bar at the bottom. I agree and understand. At this point, you will receive a confirmation email. Now you have an Austender account and we can move to the login screen. Here we'll find the opportunity and be able to access the approach to market document, which is essentially your application. So Audrey just logged in. Now to find this actual opportunity, you'll need to search for it. So you can either type in, in the title, which is the First Nations Expert Working Group, or you can use the approach to market ID, and that is 100292-0. One zero zero two nine eight two six. Okay, so here we have the First Nations Expert Working Group on Indigenous Cultural and Intellectual Property Opportunities. On the left hand side of the screen, you'll see an orange bar with ATM documents. Again, this is the approach to market document that Audrey is clicking on now. Once you're in, you can click on the Word document that Audrey's pointing at, which is the approach to market document. This is the key document you need to read. This tells, us, tells you about the opportunity. It sets out all of the details and expectations of what we require from a working group member, and it's also your application document. Look, it's a large document of 32 pages. Um, but the good news is there's actually only a few key areas for you to focus on. And I just want to bring those to your attention now. 
Um, Audrey, can you scroll down to the key information and dates? Thank you. So this is a summary of the key information that you do respond to and the timeline. If we just look at the conditions for participation in this section, this is actually your eligibility requirement and you'll need to be able to provide relevant confirmation of your Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander heritage. So that's the only eligibility. Okay, Audrey, thanks. Can you scroll down to page five where we find the criteria? Trisha's actually already covered the criteria, but I just wanted to point out where you can find it in this document. Later on, we'll show you where you can actually provide a pitch of up to 500 words, which is approximately a page, to illustrate your expertise in at least one of these three criteria. Okay, let's move to page six. Um, these are actually your service fees that you might want to consider when you're applying for this position. It gives you the, the fees and also the breakdown of um, what we pay during meeting days. Okay, moving on to page eight. This is where we find the instructions about lodgement of the response. And I'll go into that in a little bit um, more detail later. But this is a good reminder that there are at least three documents you'll need to have saved for the lodgement. These documents are the approach to market application, which is the document we're in now. You'll have to save it after you have completed it. Your CV and the confirmation of your heritage. All of these documents need to be provided as either a Word document or a PDF. Okay, on page 22, this is where you will begin your application. Your application, again, is called the Response to Approach to Market. Okay, there's a section that says Potential Suppliers Contact Officer. This does not apply to you. This would be a situation where you were in a company and the company was applying on your behalf. So if you just move straight on to part one, this is you, the supplier. You are the supplier of your expertise that we are interested in. Okay, so provide your name and then just tick that you are an individual or a sole trader. Put in your address again, and then where it says country of tax residency, this doesn't apply to you as you are not a company. Um, but again, if you have an ABN, do supply it. If not, that's completely fine. Okay, part two. This is on page 26. Okay, you can see that there's drafting notes on these sections. This just lets you know what we're after in these sections. And at this point, this is where you provide a short statement about how you meet the conditions, which is your eligibility, confirming that you are of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander heritage. Just below, you can see there's a little highlighted text that says insert text. It really is at this point, just a simple statement. Moving on to part three, on page 27, it's called Response to Selection Criteria. This is where you provide that 500 word pitch. Here we find the selection criteria again. Can you highlight those, Audrey? Yeah. Okay, so, you have the opportunity to tell us about your ability to meet the requirements of the role and also <laughs> your chance to persuade the evaluation team that you understand the requirements and that you can deliver. 500 words is about a page, so it's not 
not a lot. At part four on page 28, this is the potential suppliers demonstrate a capability and capacity. Or in short, <laughs> you as the applicant, you will be submitting your CV, which outlines your work experience as an attachment at the lodgement stage of the process. But just at this point, just simply tick that you have attached a current CV, or in other words, will. And also, maybe you can decide whether you would like to represent as the chair or a committee member, or if you're open to either one, you would just tick both in that case. You can also, um, I mean, you can just tick yes that you've you've confirmed that you you know you will be providing evidence on your Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander heritage. Okay, let's go to page 29. If you do have any known conflicts of interest, you can complete the details now. However, we will go through the conflicts of interest if you're successful, um, and we will discuss it at that point as well. So it's not necessary, but if you if you do already preempt some conflicts, um, that would be great to, to have them up front. Finally, we get to the referees. Um, all you need to do here is provide the contact details of two referees who can attest to your capacity to meet these requirements. And that's it. You're not required to complete anything under page 29. Once you've completed the applic applicable sections of the document and are ready to submit, making sure you do save this particular document, you will head back to the Oztenor page, which Audrey has just brought up. Remember, once again, we can only accept applications submitted electronically through the Oztender website. Okay, now we're only, we only have one orange bar, and that's the lodgement page. Okay, let's, yep. Okay, you will have already saved the approach to market document that we were just looking at. Again, this was your application, your CV, and your proof of Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander heritage. You can see that there are some rules though around file naming. Can you just highlight that section, Audrey? I'll read it out because I think it may be pretty small. They, when you are actually saving your document, don't use any special characters that might include um, like a colon, a forward or black backslash, question marks, or any kind of dashes. If you have trouble um, naming it and it, it's rejected based on the, your naming, just go back and, and try and give it a, a very simple name using only probably alphabetical or um, characters or numbers. There are five response uploads available. You have a look. But you'll only need to upload three documents. Upload your first document to response one by clicking on the choose file box. This will actually send you to your own file system where you'll find your documents. When you've uploaded all three of the documents, and you're ready to submit, click that orange lodge response bar at the bottom. You'll get an on-screen receipt immediately, but also you will receive an email from Oztender to the registered user email address that you supplied. Again, please make sure you have uploaded your application documents on Oztender before 2 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on the 20th September we will not be able to accept any applications that are lodged after that cutoff time. If you save your receipt, that will be proof that you have actually lodged an application if there's any question, which does actually bring us two questions. So that's the end of our formal presentation and we're happy to take any questions that you might have. You can either pop your questions into the chat 
or we can start um, where we can start answering them. But we're also for people to virtually raise their hands. We'll unmute you. Um, so I will hand this back to Trish or anyone else in the team that may want to take up a question. But if we can answer your questions immediately today, we can take them on notice and we will add them to the FAQs, which will be published on our website. But we will also need to update the document, um, the question and answer document in Austender. So over to you. Thank you very much. Thanks, Aisha. Okay, we twee. So I will request unmute um, Tui, sorry. And yep, there you go. I've just got a question in relation to your Aboriginality check. Um, I am not signed up with my local land council. I have, I know who, who my family is, who my mob is, and I have my family tree. It takes ages for land councils to do the verification checks with anthropologists who are also non-Indigenous. It's really problematic. I've worked in this space for a long time from Western Australia and having to get that cleared, I'm, I'm not sure how you plan to deal with that, being that it's very colonial in nature. Great, thanks for your question. Um, I know it is a difficult, complex um, issue. I think we will have to take this one on notice and um, we'll update the FAQ page um, about this issue. Yeah, um, like I said, I'm happy to send in my family tree. You can actually see my whole family if you know Western Australia and where I sit and how I'm connected. But yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's problematic. Great. Thanks, Tui. And I, I know your sister as well. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Craig has a question. Is 3.1, oh, question 3.1 response comes to around 700 words, but fits in the page. Is that okay? Yep, I think that would be okay. Okay, great. And there was a question earlier from Ruth. My colleague is looking at applying through our company e.g. our company applies nominating him. Is that okay? Um, I think we also have to just double check this one, but um, in terms of non-Indigenous businesses, companies applying, um, they can nominate a person, individual who's Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islander, um, but that, that person would be acting on behalf of um, themselves and not the company. But we'll, we'll also double check that one with procurement as well. So thanks for that question. Uh, James has asked who is part of the evaluation team. Um, so we have First Nations staff from across the department from Office for the Arts who will be on the evaluation team. I'll be chairing that team. And we have someone from the repatriation team and someone from our First Nations partnership team. Thanks for that question. Craig's got another question. I've also filled in the form using my company name and myself as a representative. Is that okay? Yes, that's okay. And what else? So, so Craig's the sole shareholder of the company. Yes, that's fine. Um, Sorry, Lorraine, you missed the beginning. Uh, this session has been recorded, so it will sit on our website. Um, so you can go back to the recording and catch up on the um, content, that, content that you missed as well. Thank you. Thanks for those questions. Any other questions? Yeah, we have a question from Peter. Peter, Hi, Peter. request. Yeah. You're on, Peter. Hi, Peter. Because a lot of us, as you know, you know, we're well known and respected in our communities and 
across a few other organisations nationally, you know. So do we have to produce something or just write something to that effect? Trish, can you hear the question? Um, yes. Uh, so do you want to answer that one? So I think you said you mentioned the CV. That has to be included. Are you sorry, Peter? Are you referring to your um, the confirmation of your heritage? Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you? What criteria are you looking at? Um, it it does say in the criteria that you can get confirmation from your community that you are recognised. But that's the point I'm trying to make. We are already recognised. I mean, who would you go to? You know, it it sounds a bit double dutch to me. Um, Because a lot of people come to me. Mm. Ah, yes. Are there, um, I mean, are there other elders, Peter, in Cairns that you could potentially um, go to as well? I mean, I could, but it's just ironic that you're asking someone to vouch for you after so many years of working and serving in the community. Okay, well... We'll take that question on notice and, um, like I said, the TUI will get, we'll update the, the frequently asked right. questions page. But thanks, thanks for the question, Peter. Thank you, Trish. Great. Thank you. Greg is asking, is this working group similar? to the panel pilot tender recently by IP Australia. So we work really close, thanks for the question, Greg. We work really closely with IP Australia um, on these issues. Their panel is being set up and is really in relation to um, sort of looking at existing intellectual property laws and how that they might sort of look at addressing issues around um, potentially amending existing IP laws um, that include Indigenous knowledge, but our panel is very sort of specific in looking at developing the new legislation around protection of ICIP. So there is a little bit of a crossover, but um, se separate panels working on two kind of separate bits of um, uh, legislative work. But thanks for the question. Thanks, Alana. I think that's, were they all the questions? Any other questions I haven't been able to see? Excellent. With the further questions, um, thank you all for attending this afternoon. It's been great to have the questions coming in, and we look forward to. Um, hopefully seeing your applications and please spread the word about uh, this exciting new work that um, we're doing at Office of the Arts in terms of developing the new Stanley legislation on protection of Indigenous cultural IP. Have a great day. Thank you.